Hi, Central Grade Artists. It's Mrs. Pulliam, ready for another art project this week. Today, we'll be focusing on printmaking. This is a project we didn't get to this year, working on printmaking, but I thought I would bring you one that you could try at home. Some of the supplies you'll need for today include a Ziploc bag. If you can't don't have that, then foil works, and I'm gonna show you a demo using both. Um, markers that are washable, and if you happen to have any Sharpie permanent for drawing, that would be great. And if you happen to have a squirt bottle, a water bottle, um, not the one you drink from, but one that you wouldn't like a spray bottle with just a little bit of water so we can use it for our printing. Now, printmaking is an art form that goes way back. And if you think of ways that we have print objects around us, we have them everywhere from our newspapers to our books to going to the beach, making footprints in the sand, footprints in the snow, using footprint or using footprints, using your objects um, to make found prints. So let's say you were to take fruit and dip it and paint it, kind of making that same object, Lego prints. We've tried various printmaking in simple form um, in other grades, but this is kind of a fun print. It's called a mono print. So you just print it one time, mono, like monochromatic, one color. This is one print. So it easily wipes away. You don't use it again. But sometimes people would print where they carve into wood or they etch into metal and they get the same pattern over and over the same print. And then you use special inks to create that print. So the history of printmaking goes really far back. Someone local who's no longer alive, but this artist is from Benzie County. Her name um, was Gwen Frostick, and she was a well-known printmaker, and her art studio is still located in Benzie County. Maybe you've been there before. And she used her backyard nature, and she was right along the Betsy River out there. So she was able to go out and sketch and then she'd come back to her studio and she'd etch on metal plates. And it takes a special tool to do that. And then they would go down to the printing presses and she would ink and the um, people that would help her create her patterns. This is one from a calendar, all of her designs. And you can see how much nature was an inspiration for her. So Gwen Frostick is her name and um, she's always a really well-known local artist. And hers were made into note cards, wrapping paper, you name it. So what I'm going to do is um, get myself set up to do a demo, just like if we were in the classroom and you'll see me working just like it's on the dot cam. This will give you a couple minutes to go grab some supplies, pause the video, and you will become a printmaker in your own house. This is something fun I bet um, another person in your house would like to try with you. So go get the supplies and I'll see you soon. All right, artists, we're back. I did forget to mention that you will need some paper to print on in addition to having a foil, the Ziploc bag, markers, and if you happen to have a water spray bottle. That would be super helpful to make this project work. So to get started, what you'll need is um, paper, any size you want. You just want to remember for this project that your foil should kind of match the same size because we're going to print this on here. So we do need something as a decorative background and this would be a good opportunity. You could write your name, you could draw flowers, you could draw a really cool car, you could draw your favorite cartoon characters, or you could just draw a simple design and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start with a circle. Maybe like a ray zigzag, curvy line, some dots, how about some V's in between, and some circles. This type of design is called radial design because it radiates from the center and it has a tendency to grow. Notice the design is growing outward. I'll frame it in the corner. 
and add some more curving lines. Great. Okay. That works. All right. So to get the printing part ready, I'll demonstrate both ways. First way I'll demonstrate is with the foil. On the foil, this is why I said you'll need the washable markers. Go ahead and choose your color pattern to color directly on top of the foil. So I'm just randomly filling this in back and forth. I'm going to section mine off into um, rectangle pattern. You could be as loose as you want, being having a very random pattern, stripes, polka dots, whatever you feel. And let's try this light blue. My markers rolling away on my big art table. So the space that I create is in my house. I have an art room. And this is a really large table that I have that was actually from my um, dad's office. My dad is an engineer, so he gets to do a lot of design work. Okay, so next step. Take that spray bottle, and we're not going to submerge water. We're not going to get a lot. I'm just going to offer one, two small squirts. And while it's wet, I will take my drawing and place directly on top. And I'll use my hands to gently press. I need to use your fingertips to rub. And you can probably predict what might happen We use washable marker, a little bit of water. And if I'm peeking correctly, like a printmaker, and pull my print, there you have the transfer of the colors onto my piece of paper. How cool is that? It's so fun. Possibilities are endless. And you know, all you simply need to do is, well, you can wipe it off and Try again or turn it over like I did here. All right, that's one step. There's another one. So this is just a plastic bag. And here's my paper again. I think I'll just write my name real quick. This would be a cool thing to decorate. For your front window we have a lot of people that walk by and hannah parker and i have decorated the front window with flowers and hearts thanking our workers essential workers all right so again here's just a good old ziploc bag i'm gonna add some color one i think i'll just do the blues i really like how those blues look Hmm, I'll repeat. All right. And the water. If you don't have a water spray bottle, you could always just bring a small cup of water and dip your fingers in it and kind of set it on there. Apply the paper and apply my fingertips to let the marker color soak into. Ooh, that one turned out really neat. Boy, these would be nice to turn into little cards to send to a relative you haven't seen. I can imagine a grandparent liking to receive one of these. Or bookmarks. Could you do that? Or you could cut them into hearts. So there are two different ways that you can be a printmaker at home. I hope you have the supplies. Talk to a grown-up. They can help you. If you do create something, please send it to Mrs. Pulliam, either on the YouTube channel, you can directly send it to me there, or email it to me at school. If you have a picture of yourself, just make sure um, that your grown-up knows if they take a picture of you that I might post it on another video to share out. I have some slides ready. Um, and as always, I hope you guys are doing great. Keep art in your heart and have fun. I'm going to create something else now. All right, I'll check in with you soon.